I'll remind you to listen to me at all times. Understand? Shake hands, come out the bell. Good luck. Given Floyd Mayweather's retirement, or at least inactivity, Oscar De La Hoya and Roy Jones's decline, there's a vacuum at the top of the American boxing landscape. Will Andre Berto fill it, or can Luis Colazzo thwart him? 12 rounds to make that determination here tonight in Biloxi. Andre Berto and Luis Colazzo. 147 pounds. A little bit of a delay as the officials get out of the ring and Keith Hughes, the referee, will get this underway. Andre Berto begins the 100th round professionally of his career. Colazzo the 183rd. <laughs> Lennox Berto is the one with the better hand speed. You know that going in. What does Colazzo have to do to negate that? Well, Colazzo has to set traps and make sure he doesn't get hit, hit and overwhelmed by the speed. Uh, right now, he hasn't been hit by anything, so he, he doesn't have anything to get worried about. But right now, you know, they're testing each other out. They don't know each other. Obviously, Berto realizes that uh, Colazzo has a lot of experience, so he doesn't want to put himself out front too quick. Berto has supreme confidence in his ability. He says, I'll see how the fight's going, and then I'll make my adjustments according to what Colazzo's bringing, because he can fight. Oh, left hand staggers Berto! In, in that situation, Berto was off balance. But it was a good left hand by Colazzo. Berto got hurt in round number one against David Estrada. Got dropped by Cosme Rivera in 2007 in the first round. Nobody's safe, in, nobody's safe in this welterweight division. Because to get to the very top, you have to go through fighters like Luis Colazzo, who's not lying down for anyone. Berto has shown the ability go, to Let bounce back from these rough starts. Stop, stop, stop. Watch the behind the head. See, now. in this situation, Berto's doing the right thing by holding. You know, some some boxers elect to move around as well. That, that you know, until their hair, head clears. But, you know, Berto got a, over the shock of that good left hand by Colazzo. Compared to Andre Berto, Colazzo and most fighters are physically ordinary. Good counter right hand by Berto. Catches the attention of Colazzo. Colazzo's trying to counteract. Oh, Colazzo's left getting right hit. combination by Berto, and Colazzo holds on. He's trying to counteract these physical gifts Berto brings with timing. Not always possible. That's how fast Berto is. Both men have had their moments here in round number one. Palazzo back on the attack. Shoots a left to the body. Uh -uh, stop. No punching. Step back. Uh -huh. Come on, guys. Come on. Let him go, bro. Ten seconds. You know, it's very evident that stop both punching. fighters stop. can eat, hit each other with their power punch. So, you know, it's... It's evident to see, you know, which one's going to hit each other first. Great start to the fight. Berto gets dropped, comes back, and staggers Colazzo. Right oh. right, I got you. Right? Yep. Oh, no. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. What did we do? Oh, no. Dip. Use them legs. Dip. Don't go straight back on me. Use them legs. Dip. Touch that shoulder. I'm excited, and you, but you're taking your time, all right? Do your thing. Do your thing. But you got to throw punches, all right? Going in and coming back, all right? And here we see Colazzo throwing this left hand, catching Berto. Little off balance by Berto because he didn't have his back foot to catch him when he went back. Nice, look like he also went straight back a little bit. Yeah, he went straight back. Here's another angle. And this is where Berto then kind of turned things in the middle part of the round. Yeah, he had to do that, and that was a good comeback by him. 
So an explosive start to the fight as Andre Berto gets dropped. To start the round, comes Bring back against Colazzo. Both guys had their moments in that round. And we begin round number two. And the timekeeper a little bit off on the top of the long one minute. Neither guy, I'm sure, minded. Alex, does that bother you? As a fighter, you're, you're so programmed, three minutes, one minute rest. If it goes longer with the rest period, you, you almost get antsy? You get a little antsy. I mean, you know, if it was later rounds, you always uh, love the fact that, you know, you get a little extra on, time to rest. Stop, stop, stop. But uh, I think uh, the timekeeper fell asleep there. Palazzo told us that when Berto gets hit clean, he comes back quickly, but he opens himself up. And he gets a little wide. Colazzo's game plan coming in is to draw the counter from Birdo using feints and then counter Birdo's counter. Easier said than done. Good body shot by Colazzo. Watch your head, Birdo. Stop, stop. Come on, come on. Come on, guys. Watch your head. Birdo needs to get on his job a little bit more. He's kind of measuring, and and I think Colazzo's job's bothering him a little bit, so he wants to put that left hand out there to block that jab. Berto goes straight back again. Gets tapped with the left. Come on, come on. Berto shoots a good right hand on the inside. Uh, that that ah, special kind of hand speed. Watch your way. Let's go, Bardo. Stop. Every every boxing era, you have a couple of guys who seem to just be operating in a different speed level than everybody else. And Berto is one of those guys right now. Yeah, I mean, this is one fight where Berto has good power, but you know he can't depend on the power right now because Plazo knows how to deal with power, and you know. He knows how to stay away from punches and protect himself. So doesn't want, doesn't we don't want Berto to be losing too much energy trying to throw those power shots too early. Lazar was stopped once early in his career back in 2002. To a more experienced Edwin Cassiani. There's the hand speed and the combination from Berto. Colazzo looks to come right back. Colazzo seems like he's putting a little pressure on Berto. Um, I wonder if that's part of his game plan, but it seems to be effective. Good right hand by Berto. Steps in with a left. That hand speed as he jumps in with a left. This is with the right. End of round number two. You get on him or you? Coming in March, it's Magic and Bird, a courtship of rivals, a 90 minute documentary which examines the historic rivalry between Basketball Hall of Famers Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Don't be tying up, okay? Keep moving, keep moving. Don't tie up because he's landing shots he shouldn't land. All right, and if so, you lay that, you lay that face right on there and tie his arms up, okay? Okay. Hold. Look at the rounds like that, babe. You can't afford giving right, any more right. rounds like that, okay? Ball. You gotta be smart. Come on, Sam. Hey, Good job, guys. Good job. Use your legs. Pop, move. Keep circling. Don't stand right in front of him. Good job. One of the things that Andre Berto did in round number two, Lennox, we talked about it. There you go, Kind of increased his intensity. As Berto opens up with another combination, he threw 24 more punches, according to CompuBox, in the second round. 54 in the round, as opposed to 30 in round number one. Let's see what a solid pro Colazzo is. How, how could an opponent not be impressed with Berto's ability to land punches with that hand speed? Yet Colazzo remains determined and seemingly unimpressed by Berto. Now, I think Colazzo has hurt Berto there. Berto was kind of holding on. It looked like he was bothered by one of those short hey, shots go, inside. Go, go. One more. You want that? Your warning. All right. Stop holding. Bunch. All right. You heard Berto. He's been warned a couple times for holding. Oh, 
Palazzo digs with a hook, counter right hand from Berto, misses with the left, Palazzo with a short left inside. See, this is where Berto is a bit too square to, to Palazzo, where he shouldn't be square, he should have that left foot forward. And cover up a bit more. Palazzo winning the battle on the inside. This is where people... What, what exchanges here? Berto with a right hand, Palazzo digs in on the inside. Right hand over the top by good, Berto. Good right hand by Berto. He's countering very well. He's applying the pressure. He's putting Colazzo against the ropes. But this is where I don't like Berto, where he stands in there. The other guy's got his hands free, and he's allowing himself to get hit. This is what he needs to do. He, he, needs, to, he needs to tie him up. He draws comparisons to Meldrick Taylor, a great but flawed fighter for the same reasons. He's a little too eager to mix it up and square up to his opponent. Palazzo has done great work to the body here in this round on the inside. Most of that missed left hand scored. Palazzo fires back. What a way to set off the new year so far. Again, Lennox, the point you made, Berto's too square in front of Palazzo, like yeah. right now. I mean, even in this situation, he's supposed to even push him off. Push, Berto should push off Palazzo and get him away from him and have been moving backwards, and then he could apply the pressure and throw some punches. That body work by Colazzo is taking a toll on Berto, who looks gassed already. Left hand, counter right. Colazzo says, didn't hurt me. Berto's yeah. fighting Colazzo's type of fight. I don't think he should really be in there. He's got that quick, quickness of feet, quickness of hands. He should actually be in and out. Go do his damage inside, then come out and move, use, use his footwork and move around the ring. Big round for Luis Colazzo. Champ. Lou, once in a while, you gotta hold him. Bring the fucking momentum, all right? When you hit him with nice punches, all right, baby? Steady, how time is it? Hold this, hold this. You understand? Stay to the outside and box this You don't need to be inside. I know you're as tough as he is. I don't need to breathe. No feel tonight. Tonight you're gonna be champ, man. It's a fight, babe. It's a fight. This is us. All right? Ain't nobody ever gave you. Well, Luis Colazzo took the fight to Andre Berto in round number three. No, let's go! Through 90 punches in the round, landed 45% of his power shots, 37 of 82. Harold Letterman, how do you have a score? Okay, Bob. Two rounds to one. 29, 28, Luis Colazzo. Bob, I'll tell you, round one, he locked, he knocked on the Berto clear, clear across the ring. I mean, he had him hurt. He won that round with that big shot. That sent Berto flying. Round two, Andre Berto came back with nice right hands. But in round three, Louis Colazzo and Andre Berto went toe to toe. And certainly, Colazzo got the best of them. Two to one, Colazzo. Bob, we're seeing a young physical phenom in Berto going to school. Right now, he's at school against the seasoned veteran fighter. Let me just put some of those numbers in context as Colazzo answers back. The welterweight average for punches thrown around by CompuBox is about 58. Colazzo threw 90 in the last round. And he had 12 connects to the body. And that took a lot of gas, Lennox, out of Berto. Yeah, I mean, is the type of fighter that likes to mix it up, and the body, body punches is part of his repertoire, and, and he's definitely using it well. Now, that's because Andre Berto is fighting the wrong type of fight. He needs to, needs to use his quickness. He doesn't need to be in there. He needs to use his explosive power and go in the combinations and get out of the way. You know, I got to say, he was trying to do that in the first round, and Colazzo timed him and uh, had him badly hurt. Well, Colazzo kind of no felt, no guys. He told us that when Berto gets hit, he gets open, he gets a little reckless, and Colazzo has made him pay. He, he's lured Berto into his kind of fight. 
I don't think it's an accident that Berto is now finding himself in this kind of fight. And well, the conditioning is going to be put to a test here because it's been a hard three plus rounds. And there's still a long way to go, but you know, um, like I said, he's boxing the wrong type of fight right now. This inside stuff really takes out a, lot, a, a, a big toll on. Referee's going to warn Berto for holding. Now he's taking a point away. Now he has warned him. He warned him in round one. He warned him in round three. He told him in the last round, this is your last warning, and I'm going to take a point away. Very rare you see a point deducted just for holding, not just holding and hitting. And I applaud the referee, but it's uncommon. Even going backward, Palazzo able to pick off Berto coming in. Ref was very clear with Berto, this is your warning a couple rounds ago, and he means business. Yeah. Uh, right hand missed by Berto. The ref did give him ample warning, but you know, some refs don't like when you're holding, obviously this ref doesn't. Yeah, fan friendly. Look, he's resting, when he's resting, like I told you, it's like running, baby. When you running, you get the other guy tired. Pick your pace up, slow down. He's breathing, all right? Just keep that tight and bend. When you walk into him, keep it tight, bring it. He can't handle your arsenal, man. You don't handle it. Nice, you can look at the hold here. And here's the holding. Palazzo did a little holding there, too. Looks like both of them were holding, but the referee has given Berto a couple rounds of, of warn, warnings, and this is the time he took the point away. Inside, you're trying to hold, you can't hold. Okay? I don't need it. Breathe <laughs> Let me take care of the ref. You take care of your business, all right? So a point deduction for Andre Berto in a round probably didn't win. Let's go. Makes it 10-8 for Palazzo if you scored it for Palazzo. As we begin round number five, scheduled for 12. One of the things that Colazzo has added to his game, so this is the first time in his career as the mouthpiece comes out. See, in a situation yeah. like that, when you punch out the mouthpiece, you keep on fighting. You don't care about uh, waiting for the ref to pick up the other guy's right. mouthpiece. Palazzo talked about, for the first time in his career, training like an elite athlete. Using yeah. a strength coach, a conditioning coach, trying yeah. to take his game to the next level. And, you know, after a certain point, this is what you have to do. Most good professional boxers realize that they need a bit more. You know, after the amateur program, you know, you need, and you step into the professional program, you need a little bit, a little bit more power. Colazzo was not a coddled amateur who signed a, with a big signing bonus upon turning pro. He's had to come up the hard way. That usually means holding down a job and, and not having access to the same kind of training that more it perceived elite athletes have, like Berto, from the very outset of their career. Colazzo has a bread route delivers bread to hospitals, gets up early in the morning, does that. His girlfriend, Francis Pacheco, got him involved with the business. He said, I'd like to give up the bread route and make some bread in boxing. You see one of the issues with Berto here, who struggled tonight and is probably down on the scorecards, you'd imagine. He's small. For a welterweight, Colazzo's not a big welterweight, and he seems to enjoy a height and reach advantage against Berto. Really, Berto looks like a junior welterweight fighting at welterweight, even though he began his career as a middleweight. Lennox, how can Berto get back in a rhythm and sort of get a measure of control in this fight? Because right now it feels like Colazzo is dictating all the terms. Well, right now he's doing the right thing by not making it an in-fight with Colazzo because Colazzo has that uh, experience and he's going to use it well when they're inside. This is where he needs to be on the outside using his quickness, using his speed, and uses an explosive power. See, Colazzo cannot move as quick as him, so Colazzo will commit himself and he has to wait till Colazzo commits himself and take advantage of that. Right now, Colazzo is waiting for him to commit himself and then trying to take advantage of that. Colazzo blocks that combination with his gloves. Colazzo missed with the left hand over the top. Yeah, Andres Berto's 
electing to box a little bit more, moving a little bit more. And he's limited the effectiveness of Colazzo in this round as far as connects. According to CompuBox, only seven connects for Colazzo here in the round. January 26th kicks off a very special four episode run of the Emmy Award winning series 24 7. This time around instead of boxing we'll take you into the world of NASCAR as we bring you an all access look into the lives of Jimmy Johnson and his teammates as they prepare for the Daytona 500. January 30th World Championship Boxing returns with fellow champions Shane Mosley and Andre Berto meeting in a welterweight title unification fight. You gotta touch him and move, and that's all you gotta do. Yeah, you're too fast for him. Use your speed, and this fight will become easy. Up and down. When you stand there, it's the only time he hits you. The only time he hits you is when you stand there. You hear me? Up and down. You understand me? Yeah. I saw Andre Berto pouring the way the blood. This little clash of heads at the end of the last round caused that problem. But now Berto trying to measure distance and use his hand speed to stay out of Palazzo's wheelhouse. Good jab by Berto. Lennox a much more intelligent approach to the start of the round by Berto. Yeah, I mean, he's got that boxing ability. Like I said, he's he can move, he can box. This is what he needs to do against Colazzo because Colazzo can't do that. He's got to use all his advantages that he needs to do. Both of you, both of you. Let's go. Remember, Berto lost a point in round number four for holding. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, guys. Referee has sort of put himself in a tough position having already deducted a point from Berto for holding. If Berto continues to hold and another point gets deducted, after that, he'd be looking at a disqualification. Berto stepped in with a good right hand. Palazzo dips away from the rest of the danger. Is Berto circling too much to his right against the southpaw? Well, he needs to mix it up. He needs to circle to his right and to his left. And when he's when he's switching sides, that's when he needs to throw combinations to keep Palazzo busy. This is where Berto gets himself in trouble. Ber Berto's trying to get Berto's trying to push him against the ropes as a form of holding, but what he's doing is allowing him to punch at the same time and not and not punching him back. You know. Give Colazzo credit, Berto boxing exceptionally well to start the round, was not able to deter Colazzo, who continued to throw punches to the body to apply pressure and to set traps for Berto. Berto is better on the outside, keeping him on the outside. It's always better when Colazzo's trying to catch you because you, is, you're allowing him to commit himself, and you, that's when you can use your quickness and take him out. Left cross, shoe shot to the body by Colazzo. He dips away from the punches of Berto. Uppercut by Berto. Palazzo withstands it. Happy New Year, boxing fans. Right hand by Berto. Knocks back Palazzo. And Berto's got a good uppercut when he throws it. And this is a good time to throw it against Palazzo. But, you know, you have to throw two uppercuts, not one. Which we saw Palazzo do earlier. End of round number six, halfway point. Listen to me. Get outside. Okay. You're too fast for him. Don't look for big punches. Okay. Remember we talked about adjusting? Remember we talked about adjusting? And here we're going to see the headbutt by Colazzo, but you know, wasn't meant. He was throwing the punch punches coming inside, but it still gave a nasty gash over Berto's 
All right. That happened at the end of round number five. It didn't seem to be a problem in round number six. Berto has a very good cut man in Danny Milano working on that cut. In round number six, Berto landed 50% of his power shots according to CompuBox, 19 of 38. Time for Harold Letterman's scorecard. Okay, Bob. 58, 55, four rounds to two. Louis Colazzo. Well, I gotta tell you, Bob, I thought in that last round, Louis Colazzo, although he fought off the ropes, had a very good round. I mean, he was working the body real well, coming back when Berto would land the power shots, and I thought he did. He absolutely outpunched him. Be as it may, that one point deduction by the referee sort of hurts because, you know, if the guy gets hurt, like Berto got hurt in the first round, you can't blame him for holding. I mean, if you, you take away a point when a guy's holding when he's not hurt, but if he's hurt, he's got every right to grab. Be as it may, fortitude, Colazzo. You know, I agree with that. You know, a referee not allowing you to hold one bit. You gotta, Bob holding is part of the sport. Unfortunately. But he warned him in round number three, and he deducted the point in round number four. He got knocked down in round number one. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman, and the aforementioned Harold Letterman ringside in Biloxi at the Beau Rivage. Andre Berto, 23 0, 19 knockouts in the green trunks, defending his belt against. 27-year-old Luis Colazzo out of Brooklyn, 29 and three with 14 knockouts. Look, look at the there left go, eye of go. Andre Berto. It's starting to really show the wear and tear of this fight. Berto begins each round looking sharp and crisp and landing his punches, but class tells over time. And so far as the rounds have progressed, Berto, uh, excuse me, Colazzo's class has told. Looks like Colazzo's a little bit winded now, more than half a past the, the fight, and it's showing on him a little bit, too. Yes, yes Berto has landed a couple nice hooks to the body, just missed with a right cross. Palazzo not throwing punches. Yes, for the first time, Palazzo also looks like this battle is taking the toll on him physically. Colazzo, Colazzo looks like he's setting him up, waiting for Berto to come in and commit himself before he comes out with either a, a left hand or a right hook. But shouldn't Berto just be double jabbing his way in? Is this Colazzo's is going to stand there? Yeah, this is where Berto needs to be piling up the points, hit what he can see, no, knowing that Colazzo's trying to catch him coming in, so he has to be smart about it and use that double jab, triple jab to get in. He's opened up a cut over Colazzo's left eye this round. Colazzo's making a big mis mistake against a puncher like Andrew, Andrew Berto because he can come out with a an explosive punch at any given time and catch you. Berto needed something to turn this fight around. Maybe he's found it here in the seventh. Palazzo fans try to rally. Palazzo, the Berto fans will get in full throat. You're walking him down, you're walking him down, and you're not getting there first. Right? Step a little bit over to your left, you'll get there faster than him. Come on, you're following him around too much. Put that ice bag on him. Right there. Put it right here. When you you want to win, yeah. touch his dude and don't hold him no more. Yeah, he ain't taking shit. I'm going to box this motherfucker with hands up and get out of there. You touch it. You been moving? I ain't gonna worry about nothing. You understand me? Come on, focus. Come on, baby. You work too hard for this. Come on. Come on. Keep moving them hands, baby. Come on. Round number eight begins for Andre Berto and Luis Palazzo. You saw the cut on the left eye of Palazzo. It's in a lot worse position than the cut on Berto's eye. So Palazzo is at a crossroads, maybe in his career, maybe right here in this round, where a fight that he looked to be taking over increasingly suddenly shifted to Andre Berto. Palazzo complaining about a kidney punch. Referee doesn't listen. Well, you, you know, in cer certain fighters usually get off to a quick start, but, you know, halfway through a fight, they kind of slow right down. I remember my fight against Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno came out 
And he threw a lot of combinations, good punches, but, you know, after the six rounds, that's when I started to take charge. Well, Colazzo lost tough to Ricky Hatton, hurt himself against Shane Mosley. This is the third time he's in against a top fighter, an elite fighter, and uh, or one perceived that way. And at a certain point, people aren't going to want to hear, well, he lost in a tough fight. This is a really important moment in Colazzo's career right now. And we showed you the copy box numbers in between rounds. Berto landed 78% of his power shots in the last round. Colazzo just didn't throw punches. Only threw 40. And again, he's not throwing punches. He's tough to figure out what the motivation well, I think was you, I think you caught it last round, Bob. Berto concentrated on Colazzo's body early, and it seemed to pay dividends. Berto trying to pick his shots right now. Colazzo has allowed Berto to get into the rhythm that Andre Berto wants. Meanwhile, Berto is showing an extra dimension to his game here, which we saw flashes of in his fight against David Estrada. Being able to rally in a fight in which he's been hurt and when it looked like it wasn't his day and it wasn't going his way. Well, Berto's doing a good job by placing his shots to the body, which is important at this this t moment and time in the fight because this is what's going to take all the energy out of Colazzo and uh, and it seems on, like it's like you said max working dividends thunderous body shots by Berto and that's the reason why Colazzo is slowed down you know this welterweight division Floyd Mayweather retired at the very least he's extremely inactive right now everyone else in this division everyone who's considered a top fighter has lost there are no undefeated fighters they're too evenly matched they're too good if Berto gets away with a W tonight, he will have really made a statement. According to Coffee Box, Berto has almost landed as many punches as Colazzo has thrown. To this point, Colazzo has thrown 27. Good right hand by Berto. Rocks back the head of Colazzo. End of round eight. As Colazzo run out of gas. Well, you know, he could be he could have been resting. Come on. Get that energy. Letting them get back in the fight now. That's it. Digging deep, man. Digging deep, champ. Come on. You got it in you. And you ever see it, you ever see a, a good left jab by Berto. This is the punch that actually cut Colazzo on that left eye you can see right there. You gotta get busier. You gotta get busier. Come on. Suck it up. Bite down, man. Come on. This is it, Lou. No tomorrow, tomorrow, baby. That's right. Come on. He's hurt to the body. Rousing. Up that leg. I got it. Okay. He's hurt to the body. You wanna win this? Keep working. Don't work too hard. All right. Well, don't give me both. Now you could make the case that Berto has won the last four rounds could make that case, although one of those rounds I know that Harold did give to Colasso, but the tide of this fight has really turned in the favor of Berto, and he's done it with body work and staying out of the The point is that he, of he found something. He was looking for something, and he found it. And maybe the best example of that in boxing today is Joe Calzaghi, who, especially against Mikkel Kessler a couple years ago, was able to dial it up past where you'd expect he could when Kessler demanded more of him. Here, Colazzo is demanding more of Berto, and Berto is adjusting and giving more. That extra dimension is part of the star quality, it's part of the package that the boxing world is looking for to fill that vacuum at the top of the sport left by De La Hoya and Roy Jones' decline. Let's see if Luis Colazzo now can answer. He's trying to buy another point. The way he looked at the referee, like, look, he's holding me. You know, you have to use every advantage you can. If, if a man's holding you, and Colazzo realizes that Andre's hurting him and holding him, and he's, he's going in, in there, and he's actually begging Andre to hold him again. He wants Andre to hold him, so the referee is on his case. Those two left hands that Colazzo landed by far his most effective punches in a couple of rounds. Well, he's had enough time to rest and uh, wait for those two punches to come.
Short left. Berto counters. Berto figured out a couple rounds ago that all those body shots that Colazzo was hurting him with were a good idea. Started throwing body shots of his own, and that turned the tide of the fight, as you mentioned, Bob. Also, what Berto did, he, he started moving around the ring a little bit and not being a sitting target for Colazzo. Well, now Colazzo's going back to work here a little bit. The hallmarks of a great fight are constant shifts in momentum, where yeah. the ending is difficult to determine. And here we see Colazzo rallying back and hurting Berto and changing, it seems, again, the momentum of the fight. I wouldn't say he's hurting Berto. In I would body say he's, yeah, he's, he's helped punching him, he's, he's piling up the points. Berto's in a position where he shouldn't even be taking these punches. He should be pushing the guy off and moving away and allowing Colazzo to come after him. Right now he's just is flat-footed, is in front of the guy's square, and he's allowing Colazzo to hit him. And these are the problems that Berto had earlier in the fight. Good right hand though by Berto. Colazzo misses with his counter right. Left hand by Berto. Snaps back the head of Colazzo. Digs right back in. Problems for Berto, not for fight fans. This is great stuff. Great rallying round for Luis Colazzo. He threw 97 punches according to copy box to 33 from Berto. Like I said, he was resting those two rounds. Whether he can do that for the next few rounds is is in question. Louis, let's come down to who got more balls, Dave. Okay. You right. fight, you're gonna take it. That's Giselle Berto, Andre's father. Saying the right thing. Well, when he jabbed and moved, it worked well. Breathe for me again. Deep rest, baby. You gotta breathe deep. You finish these last three rounds smart and hard, we win. He's trying to dig with that overhand. This is a 10. Come on, champ. How about this? According to CompuBox, Berto, in that last round, threw 33 punches. Colazzo landed 33 of his 97. And Berto only threw seven jabs in that round. Got away from what worked for him. Let him go, let him go. Berto's energy looked sapped at the end of the last round. Check in with the unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, 87, 83. Six rounds to three, Louis Colazzo. Bob, I just think the guy's outworking him. He's constantly putting pressure on him. Even when he lays on a ropes, he outworks him. I don't know. I, I think this kid's coming forward the whole fight. Andre Berto lands an occasional good right hand. Shows some flashes of what he used to have. But he was 160 when he walked in the ring tonight. And I think he's slower than he normally is. I think Louis Colazzo, like you see here, is just outworking him. Six to three, Colazzo. He's slower, but that's what enough right hooks in the body will do to you. They'll slow you up. Chant of Louis from the Colazzo fans that made the trip from Brooklyn. Ber Berto needs to take a step back and use his boxing ability. Right now, this is where he doesn't want to be. Colazzo's doing a good job by keeping the pressure on Berto. This is what he needs to do to beat Berto, but... Still a few rounds left. And Colazzo's throwing a lot of punches in there. This is how Berto got in trouble early in the fight. Languishing in front of Colazzo, who's just picking him apart and digging to the body. Now it's Colazzo who found that extra level to go to. Berto's gonna have to respond. He's getting hit an awful lot. Thumping right hand from Berto after a Colazzo combination. Berto trying to load up. Berto has abandoned his jab. He's fighting an in-fight. That's advantage Colazzo. Hook to the body, hook to the chin by Colazzo. Colazzo looks a little bit winded. This is the time for Andre to take advantage if he can. But whether he has enough energy left in his combination punching right now, but this is the time to cease it. These two are fighting at an inhuman pace for the 10th round of a fast-paced and brutal fight. Look at the power punches thrown in this round. 159 combined. And that's fatigue right there. As Berto can't keep his feet. Punch. 
Brother does not need to be inside again. He really, he just walked in there with no punches. Good uppercut by Berto, but he's, he's gonna need a lot more than that. Palazzo has thrown 112 punches in the round, landing 37. 106 power shots. But you still ain't, oh, wait a minute, we're laying inside. We gotta work and move. Now let's do it, let's do it. Let's just fucking fight away. What's the matter with this, Berto? Listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Put the ice right there, right there. Look, we got two more rounds, baby. The only way they're gonna do this is rob you again, baby. So don't leave it up. Come on, don't leave it to them. When you punch them six, seven punches, they grab the motherfucker. I got you. I got my fault. Right, so, where my body? All right, well, listen. <clears throat> We're working them. We're working them. Give me that fucking bucket. You hear me? Huh? We're working. You understand okay. me? We gotta go. We got two rounds. That is the most punches that Andre Berto has ever endured in fights tracked by CompuBox. Nine go, for on. him, and the most landed against him. The welterweight average for power punches thrown in the round is 34. Palazzo threw 106 in the round as we begin round number 11. Can Andre Berto rally? Palazzo dug his heels in in round number nine and round number ten. This has been a great fight so far, and it just has the feeling of a fight that's heading towards a dramatic conclusion. The undefeated Berto. 29 and 3 Palazzo. Palazzo stopped once early in his career. Back in 2002. He was in the third round. Both fighters know how much is at stake for Palazzo. Maybe three strikes and you're out in terms of getting fuck shots at the top of the division. And for Berto, his undefeated record. Continued uninterrupted ascension towards the top of the welterweight ranks. Well, we saw another talented welterweight just about a year ago here in boxing after Dark Paul Williams suffered his first defeat. You know, with my first defeat, I would say I would never have been as great as I am today if I never have lost. And I think most undefeated guys need to go through one loss to realize, you know, that it's possible to lose, and it shows what type of champion they are when they come back and, and gain their championship. Roberto steps in with a combination. One minute to go on the 11th. There, there are no, except for Berto, there are no undefeated fighters in these shark-infested welterweight waters. There's no one who hasn't had a chunk taken out of them, and Berto's trying to remain the only one unblemished. Berto with a couple of good hooks to the body of Palazzo. Now, Clazo, at this point, does not like any body shots. So this is the time for, you know, Berto to start throwing his combinations to the body and ending up upstairs. Berto trying to land that big shot. Palazzo being cautious. Right hand by Berto, but he missed with the left. Seems like Colazzo's saving his energy for the 12th round. What a fight. <laughs> All right. Oh. This is it, baby. No, I'll work with you. <laughs> Come on, Louie. Louis. If you ever did anything hard, son, this is it. This is the round where you become champ of the world, all right? You want to be champ, suck it off! You want to be a champ, my friend. Suck it off, baby! Thank you, big boy. He's there with the body, but you got to dig like you've never dug. 
Roberto had a point deducted in round four. He got dropped in round one. Did Palazzo get over the hump? Did Berto remain undefeated? Good combination by Berto. Palazzo answers back to the body. Berto steps in with a right. Roberto's doing the right thing. He's getting in them power punches early because if he wants to win this fight, this is what champions are made of. And we've seen him start fast in some other rounds of this fight, only to have Colazzo come on in the middle and end of the round. Colazzo right now looks very arm-weary. We also have to remember our scorecard is unofficial. Could be closer on the judges' card. Watch the head, watch the head, both of you. This is where Berto should really step up, step back. You know, his corner should tell him to step back because Colazzo's just coming forward and step to the side. Colazzo is fighting a lot as Berto did when Berto was winning those rounds. Coming forward, looking punched out and taking oh. crisp counter punches. Colazzo has a hell of a chin. Berto just hit him with some great punches, and it seems like Colazzo just ate them up. Berto has landed all the meaningful punches in the round. Colazzo still standing there. Colazzo has yet to throw a real punch with something on it this round. Until maybe right now. Good body work oh. by Berto hurt Colazzo. Colazzo's hurt and winded. Not ruled a knockdown. Colazzo's out of gas. Berto steps in with an uppercut to the body. Colazzo trying to survive here in the 12. Not a lot of steam in the Colazzo punches. Is Berto running out of time? Final 10 seconds. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Berto needed a big 12th round. He got it. Was it big enough? Time. What a fight. Good fight. I wouldn't want to be a judge in this fight. Great fight. Luis Colazzo gave Andre Berto all he had. Was it enough? Twenty-three of thirty-two's Berto connects in the twelve power shots. Round number four. A point was deducted from Andre Berto. You see the left arm holding Colazzo. He had been warned in round one, warned in round three, and right here, referee Keith Hughes deducted the point. And in that situation, it looks like Colazzo was holding him as well. So I don't know what happened there, why the referee elected to take a point off at that point. Both men think they're winners. It sits in the hands of the three judges. Bill Clancy out of North Carolina with four title fights. Is most notable the Campbell decision over Diaz. Scored it for Campbell. 116 111. First title fight for Larry Ingle out of Mississippi. No resume on this level. Gary Ritter out of Oklahoma. 11 title fights. He had the Jones decision over Hanshaw. 114 113 is how he scored it. 
All right, Harold, how did you have it scored? Okay, Bob, I've got a 115, 112, seven rounds to five, Louis Colazzo. Bob, I just thought he outworked him. He did too much in, like, rounds nine and ten. He did too much in six and seven. He did too much in three and four. Constantly working. Backing him up. Never stopped punching. I just thought he took it away. Seven, five, Colazzo. Harold, do you think round six and seven could possibly be swing rounds, though, where, you know, maybe how you looked at it, it one of the judges could have given one of those two rounds to Berto? No question. I mean, it was a great fight. A lot of close rounds. We'll see. The crowd is the crowd is 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 shouting Berto. All right, right let's find out how the judges had it scored. Here's our ring announcer Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after 12 rounds of amazing action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Bill Clancy scores the bout 116 to 111. Judges Gary Ritter and Larry Ingle both score the bout. 114 to 113. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still.